5-4-3-2-1. David Auburn, the founder and CEO of Actioneer. He is the former president of Humanity Plus, the World Transhumanist Association. He is one of the first people to have an NFC chip implanted in his hand. The key to long life lies in the intertwining breakthroughs of biotechnology, artificial intelligence, and social adaptations. Hello. We warmly welcome you. Thank you. Can you see, oh, where your chip is? Well, it's in my hand like a little grain of rice, sealed in glass, and it's uncomfortable to remove, so the phone can be replaced. I would rather embed this somewhere else again. But you don't feel it in your daily life, and you don't get used to touching it here, thinking that it's there, it's there, everything is fine. No, I can't lose it. The question is, which type of chip do you have in your hand, the freely programmable one? or the coolest one. In fact, there will be someone among us tomorrow who is 200 years old. It takes time to truly see what it means. If we succeed in extending human lifespan, I think it is worth agreeing on whether it is theoretically possible and to invest in this direction to achieve that goal. The social contract needs to change and it will change not only from a biological perspective, but also due to artificial intelligence and humanoid robots. When people no longer have to work for a paycheck from month to month, we can ask ourselves what the purpose of our lives will be. In what ways can we plan our future lives with dignity is it possible that everything will be rearranged to the point where our primary goal will no longer be to support our family and ourselves? What I deal with, or what you deal with day by day, would have been ridiculous if someone had called it work a hundred years ago. Now, I often say this, that this is literally the job you are doing. And the fact that this is also entertainment for us and truly gives purpose to our lives is such a huge fortune that this has never happened for centuries. There are already layers in society of children, elderly people, and family members who do not work, learn, or improve the lives of others through their love, for example. And in this way, there are already examples of how society can adapt to allow more people to live in this manner. I first asked David who has a chip in his hand. It is our responsibility to prevent such a dystopian future. But I am optimistic. Technology is not a zero-sum game, but a positive someone. It has been helping us for thousands of years and it will accelerate our adaptation possibilities as the future changes so that we can also change into the future. I think we are going to run far with this conversation. Which approach do you feel closer to? It is such that if you cannot read and write, you have no right to it. No one guarantees that you will find a livelihood. In the future, you may only be able to organize your life in a worthwhile and valuable way if your ability to adapt to a world where artificial intelligence plays an important role is fundamentally technological and if you accept this, I don't know how society will be able to organize itself for you to live a life with dignity if you reject it. You know, don't you, David, that in 20, 30 years, there will be a billion robots among us. Not only will there be a billion, but the annual production level will be one billion robots. And there are not just plans for 20, 30 years, but for it to be realized within 10, 15 years. But it doesn't matter whether it's 10 or 30 years. In England, 
the consequences of industrialization inspired Dickensian novels that depicted how poor the living conditions were in London and in Ireland. Millions died of starvation. It is our responsibility to prevent this, to see the consequences of technology, and someone can be optimistic or enthusiastic about technology without being blind to the dangers. Leonardo da Vinci designed airplanes and helicopters 500 years ago. A few months before the Wright brothers were able to truly prove that flight was possible, the New York Times published articles stating that humans would never fly. So, David, are you saying that this might just be a skeptical attitude for now and then some breakthrough will come that changes everything? That's why I say it's important from a theoretical standpoint to start from the agreement that it's worth solving these problems and to truly push forward with effort and will so that one day it might just happen. Now, I would like to ask again the question I posed to the audience at the beginning of the conversation. Would you be willing to have a chip implanted in your brain in order to gain some sort of super ability? My voting device is right there in everyone's hands again, and I would like to ask you to press the button. Now, yes or no? The question is that simple, and... I don't know how closely you have been following the results. 45% of the respondents said, yes, they would volunteer, and 55% were skeptical about this matter. I am curious to see how this result has changed now. Well, it seems that we've turned things around here. So it looks like we've sparked some interest in this story. It might be because of you. By the way, this percentage of around 40 and now over 50 is very, very high. By the way, this is burning. Rosina also referred to this, indicating that the gap will be even larger, so it is likely. And this relates to Jason Silva's idea that those who are capable move forward, create, and shape the world. And then there will be a lot of people. I think it's very funny why, and it's strange that Europe, for example, voted that those who want to run ahead should not be allowed to eat. Because, for example, artificial intelligence is regulated in Europe in such a way that if I cannot afford to discuss my psychological problems with a person, a psychologist, but I would pay 40 euros or 20 euros a month for an artificial intelligence to do that, but it is prohibited in Europe. So in this way, well, the regulation intervenes, yes, and this is already a bit of the social contract here, very differently than how it happens in America. It's difficult to translate. There is no difference between us and the ancient Greek or ancient Roman people. They had their slaves. We do not lack it because we are at a morally higher level. We have the technology that allows us to organize society in such a way that we do not need slaves. The smartphone in your pocket is not there because you are a billionaire, but because the production of a billion phones makes it so cheap that even the homeless can afford one. Speech recognition programs, 20 years ago, they were only programmed in a usable way. For those who had the patience to train them for hours because they had no other option for using computers. Now everyone has it. And when you receive a message on WhatsApp, you hope that the person who sent it used text instead of recording their audio message. But this is an example, in my opinion, of a problem that has arisen from a health perspective and a technological solution that benefits everyone. So this means that more than 50% of the respondents, specifically 64%, believe that this will really happen. So it is not the most common answer given. I planted the seed in my hand 10 years ago, and I still love to carry on 
the experimentation. Theseus's ship is a myth that discusses how you maintain your individuality through various changes. I already have an alter ego named R. David Orban. Asimov stipulated that when you create a robot, its name should start with the letter R, and you can talk to it now as if you were talking to me. Of course, I would say this to my wife, and then she would slap me, rightly so. But when will it really be that those who would like to seek advice from me, and it is currently very expensive, will be able to solve some problem based on my experience at a lower cost? I hope that freedom will grow and that everyone will be able to live with it so that based on our curiosity we can continue to progress not only in the next 10 years but also in 10 million years as we get to know the universe and enjoy our lives and that this happens together with robots or magical intelligence. I'm very sorry that in the current situation we have only been able to talk this much, but in the very near future, or even if we consider that we have really unraveled a bit of the long mystery, we will also have the opportunity to discuss it further in the more distant future. I hope that today's conversation has hopefully reassured everyone rather than upset or frightened them. The future, I hope you all think this way, will be exciting, beautiful, and full of many opportunities. I would like to sincerely thank you for being here with us and for being able to discuss this. To you, I can only send the message that let's meet in the not too distant future, say a year from now at the next, which will be the sixth MVM Future Talks. Thank you very much for your attention and goodbye.